In this video, I'm going to talk about change set within Microsoft Power Automate Dataverse action. Now, change set is an action which allows you to utilize atomic transactions within the Dataverse operation. Now, that's the only uh, control which has that change set property. Now, change set basically allows you to package several operations into one atomic block. Remember, that uh, the block which you create is atomic. That means if any of the transactions fail within that block, the entire transaction fails. If all the blocks succeed, then the transaction is committed into the database. Now, the Dataverse change set request actions which are currently supported are add a new row, delete a row, and update a row. Okay? You can't have additional built-in action inside the change set scope. So what does this mean is take, for example, if you are doing any operations within a Dataverse, okay, and let's assume this is a block. Now, within this block, you can only have an add operation or a delete operation or an update operation. Any other Dataverse operation you can't have uh, within this change set block. Okay, so that means add, update, and delete uh, can uh, be only used within the change set block. And that's where the atomicity of the transaction will take place okay so atomicity is all about you know uh, having those transactions committed all or once now you can't have additional built-in actions as i mentioned inside the chain scope all actions are evaluated together in dataverse okay so all the action which you write within the chain set okay which will get evaluated all at once okay now there exists no dependency between the actions. So all the actions are independent. Okay, so there is no traces, there is no linkages, all the actions operate independently and all these actions run at once. So there is no sequential flow of execution. So that you need to remember. Now change set is the only feature available within the Dataverse control. You don't, you will not find any other control which has a change set functionality uh, out of the box. Okay, so let's see this in action and where we can use this. Okay, so I have a Power Automate flow and I have some actions written over here. The first one is get a row by ID. Now I have an account table over here and let me pick say Coho Winery. Okay, and I pick the ID from here and I will paste it in my flow. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to just getting the row by ID. Okay, so in the account, I will just paste this. Okay, and then on basis of that, I can add a new row. Okay, add a new row into some other table. Now, the other table is say, take for example, say cricketer table. Okay, so if this is my scenario whereby I'm picking up an account ID from an account table, and then if it is successful, then I'm adding uh, a row in the cricketer's table. Okay, now here in the cricketers table, I'm adding a new row. So if you see the logic, it is just referring to the cricketers table, writing the name Gary Dash, and then putting the uh, date time component. Okay, so this is a simple logic, okay, which I'm trying to uh, show you. Now I'm just saving this. So let me run this flow just to see whether it works or not. run flow okay now this flow has run successfully okay now if you see the cricketers table here you should see one more item which is Gary dash and the date time functionality embedded within that data so yes if you see this record yes this is perfectly fine and if you see the flow whether we have got the coho winery record now if you see the output under body let me see yes so if you see this uh, here i'm able to get all the records which is uh, which we have queried using the get row by id okay so you can see all the information it has pulled in all the information from the accounts table okay so that is good okay now how to perform a change set now here if i get a row by id then do this action okay what if i error out okay what if i error out uh, 
using this add a new operation okay then i don't want uh, this action to commit okay so example uh let's do one thing let me edit this flow okay now the logic what change set will do is like based on the id okay you get you can do some actions now i have just written one action now there can be multiple action add new row uh, update some record uh, delete some record okay now imagine this is a change set and if this action fails then you don't want this action to succeed you want this entire transaction to fail okay now how can we simulate that okay now in order to simulate that we need to add a chain set control now remember i'm in the new designer interface okay this is the new designer interface through power automate what i'm going to do i'm going to add an action and i'm going to search for dataverse now here if i click on see more i need to find an action called as perform a change set now if you see the list there is no record called as perform a change set here okay if i go back if i start searching for change set i won't find that okay now in the new interface as of now i don't think so we have a change set functionality so for that we need to first save the flow and switch back to the classic designer now once you are in a classic designer let's perform that same action again now here uh, if i click on new step and now i type change set there you will see under dataverse there is a perform a change set request so now this action is not available in the new interface but we will use it over here so in the classic interface so if i click on perform a change set request now this is kind of a block this kind of a scoping block which allows you to add an action now what are the different actions you can add okay it you can add only dataverse actions and only these three actions so there is no trigger and there are three actions and you can only use this three action as i mentioned to you add a new row delete a row or update a row okay now we have already added this add a new row so what we can do is let me see if i can drag and drop this action okay now will it allow it 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 is not allowing me to add a new row over here because i've already added this action so you can't technically use that so let me do one thing i will just go here add a new row okay so here i will type again the same thing i want record to be added into cricketers and uh if i go into the advanced option and the name i will just type get a and then the function qdc now okay and i'll save this record and that's it okay now uh get a row by id now can i get this value and drag and drop here no i can't do anything so i need to get rid of it okay so add a new row i will delete from here okay now here what all action we can do uh, we can add a new row we can delete a row okay now we can delete a row now the delete a row functionality is uh, it will ask for row id so let me select the account and let me go over here and select the account id which i have copied over here which is for coho binary and then i will say this is an action so it will add a record it will delete a record now if add a new row fails if add a new row fails okay or if delete a new row fails okay uh, then i want i don't want to perform the action forward okay so what i'm gonna do first is let me see if i can drag and drop this add a new row and delete a new row okay one after the other no you can't do anything about that sort okay so that means there is no sequential execution it is all going to happen parallelly now i'm just telling i want to delete a row now let's say if i uh, put some wrong value i just remove this okay and i've given this row id okay now will this action succeed okay so see what we are doing uh, here here we are taking say one example if we are taking the coho binary account by account id okay from here so it gets that context and now we are adding a new row in the cricketers table and at the same time deleting that record as well but now i've just made some mistake and i have copied a wrong row id or i removed some 
characters from the row ID. And now I'll try to perform this operation and see what happens. Okay. Now remember, this is that entire chain set block. Okay. Now first action should run, you know, and second should fail. Okay. And if you see in the cricketers table, we only have five records. Okay. So I'll just refresh and say five records. So you can see in this table, the cricketers table, there are only five records. So technically what should happen if I run this flow, had this been a sequential flow, it could have added one record and then in delete a record, it could have failed. Okay. But using change set, let me test it again. Okay. So this flow should fail. And this flow has failed as requested. Uh, and if you see here, get row by ID from a perform a change set request, it is saying delete a row failed. Now this record has not been added because this has failed that while it has uh, say reverted back all the changes. Okay, so that means if this has been a sequential flow execution uh, and we hadn't used perform a change set request, then this could have run this could have run and this could have failed. So we would have uh, be having one more record in our cricketers table. But when you use a change set request, then this entire transaction operates at once. Okay. So even if this succeed and if this fails, okay. So even if this succeeds and this fails, then what it gonna do, it is going to revert back and then it even it is going to undo that transaction. And that's why uh, if you see this cricketers table over here, you will uh, still see that five records. Okay. Now, going back, what I'm going to do is again perform the same scenario. Let me see if I can drag and drop this control, add a new row. Yes, I can do that from here. I can delete a row from here. Now I'm. Uh, not using a change set request okay i'm just keeping it uh, i'm just deleting it okay now let's see what happens within this if i save this record again the same operation now delete a row again should the flow should fail uh, on the third action delete a row okay so if you see here now here, this has succeeded. So that means the cricketers table had will have one record. Now our database is left in an inconsistent state because one of the action is executed and one of them has failed, but we wanted atomicity in place. Uh, if you see the cricketer table earlier, we had five records only. Now we have six records, but the flow has failed. Now that we don't want in our system to happen and that will lead to inconsistency of data. And that's the reason we use change set. So in change set, if we have any transaction which should happen in, uh, in a block or which should happen together, then it is wise and advisable to use this within a change set. And remember change set only has add, delete and update operations. Okay, so you can't use any other operation beyond that. So you need to be uh, very careful that you need to define your logic in such a way that you get all this information outside the flow or outside the scope of that change set action. So that's it folks. This is all about change set within Microsoft Power Automate. Thanks for watching.